Hello there, I'm Mount Payne 27 and this is Dean of Doom, the show where we give grades to classic and contemporary Doom wads. Why? Because ranking things is fun. Today's episode will be dedicated to Nostalgia, a limit-removing, retro-themed megawad released in 2022 by Myolden. This was something of a spur-of-the-moment Season 3 selection. Fortuitously, I discovered Nostalgia while trolling the 2022 CAC Awards Honorable Mentions section for Diamonds in the Rough. Despite my generally neutral opinion of old-school-style wads and growing disinterest in quote-unquote easy stuff, I burned through Nostalgia's short, crackling maps faster than a bag of mini chips ahoy. Nowadays, it's really unusual for me to replay wads until script writing time rolls around. But all through my December and January dooming, I kept getting thoughts of, I'd rather be playing Nostalgia right now. In addition to all its maps borrowing titles from metal songs, Nostalgia makes trademarks of brevity, levity, and economy. This episode is for players coming in fresh from the iWads looking for a fun and accessible inroads to custom Doom content. Veterans in need of a breather or a trip down memory lane will also get their fix. So here's how the show works. Every map gets one grade for quality and one for difficulty. Quality grades go from A to F. Grade A levels are fun, memorable, visually distinctive, creative, and a fair challenge. We grade difficulty from X to E, X for extreme, E for easy, A through D in between. Keep in mind, my idea of a great map is probably not the same as yours, but that's okay. Disagreeing is part of the fun, after all. At the end of the day, this show is about spreading the joy of doom, so let's do so. Before we start, the rules are we play on ultraviolence and must pistol start each level. I need to play the wad twice before reviewing it. Saves are allowed, and we go for 100% kills in all levels, making exceptions when it's just not worth it. I play on Z Doom, and today's compatibility is limit removing. Now to the wad. Map 1, Dragonaut. This mild mountain base is as straightforward as they make them. There aren't many megawads today that have the courage to open with such a humble map. It's kind of adorable, really. My olden tips his cap to Romero with his little E1-M1 room and accessible outdoor area, and this lightning bolt secret seems to wink in Memento Mori's direction. Dragonaut's simplicity is its best feature. Grade B-, difficulty E. Map 2, Under the Surface. My olden's homage to Underhauls is chipper and chummy. Led by a James Paddock remix of the healer stalks, Under the Surface softballs the player with a sewage-covered squadron of pinkies, imps, and zombos before quietly introducing the Kako and Hell Knight. With the obligatory super shoddy and a secret rocket launcher on hand, they're not too dangerous. I really like how my olden hides secrets, especially in these early maps. Some are freebies, but others remind me of what it feels like to remember that one secret from a map I haven't played in a while. Under the surface is really comfy. Grade B, difficulty E. Map 3, Illuminatus. Illuminatus energizes this megawad just a tiny bit with its up-tempo midi and warm start. This is where my old Golden's encounter design chops start to show. The rocket launcher puts an end to the monster's hope for survival, and if you don't get sidetracked secret hunting, you'll roll through this map in an unbroken chain of kabooms. It's here and gone in a flash, but Illuminatus builds momentum beautifully. Grade B, difficulty E. Map 4, pull the plug. I know its whole point was to walk back the intensive detailing that's become a staple of modern mapping, but Nostalgia is still a very pretty megawad. My olden's understated texturing and nuanced lighting enliven the tried and true slime base formula. I love seeing details like this caco lurking in a nukage drain pipe and this blinking monitor, which unlocks the plasma rifle. The debuts of Jack Skellington and Archie Bunker are enough to warrant some caution, and my olden makes oblivious players step lively while slumming it in poison, but he spoils active secret hunters with an extra rad suit, rockets, and a soul sphere. Pull the Plug was the first nostalgia map to really hook me, and my return trips to it have been pleasant. Grade B+, difficulty D. Map 5, Poison God Machine. God Machine? God? Machine? Oof, sorry. <laughs> I zoned out there for a second. Grimier and grittier than my olden's last toxic depot, Poison God Machine packs a punch, so break out this secret SSG and get to work. The sniper imps in the rocket launcher wing will tax sloppy or reckless play, and I tend to flee the hurt floor covered mancubus room to keep something stupid from happening. Call it slaughter Stockholm syndrome if you like, but nowadays I tend to get a bit more nervous in situations where I'm not the underdog. I'm kind of neutral about this level. Map 4 did the same theme better. Grade B minus, difficulty C minus. Map 6, Spirit Crusher. This crafty combat crossword puzzle will give profligate players a pinch. Unlike in maps 1 through 5, ammo does not grow on trees. Doom Guy and I were both gritting our teeth in this watery pit fight despite our superior health and armor. Spirit Crusher's clueless spider mastermind salutes Doom 2 map 6, but its gimmicky centerpiece doesn't get much screen time. The nastiest surprise in the map is the archvile who covets your blue key. He'll pick up whatever you left laying around on this mezzanine, including two barons who will cut your ammo to the quick. Just in case I forget to say so later, my olden does a super job calibrating difficulty 
difficulty throughout this whole megawatt. Grade B+, plus, difficulty C. Map 7, a fine day to die. You couldn't call it nostalgia if its seventh map didn't do something gimmicky with Macubi. Even compared to its bite-sized compatriots, a fine day to dead simple feels a bit tossed off. My olden seems to have spent more time taking chunks out of this base than sketching its blueprint. The hellish corruption theme is something he'll thoroughly expand on in maps to follow. The object of the game is to use three keys to trigger three skull switches which each summon pairs of Macubi. Kill them all, and the bars blocking the exit will lower. Sector 666, skullduggery aside, there's not a lot to grab onto here. Grade C+, plus, difficulty D. Map 8, Neurotica. This entrail-draped compound gives you weapons 3 through 5 in the first minute if you follow the Blood Gully all the way to the end. Once again, my Olden's combat snaps, crackles, and pops. The blue key squabble is ripe for a rocket or two, and the final fight whips out Nostalgia's first problematic archfile. Neurotica's intentionally chintzy fire blue and gore have a friend in me, and I continue to love the rapid-fire delivery of these maps. Grade B, difficulty B+. Map 9, Bleed Me an Ocean. Brutal schism, my beloved. We meet again, but not for long. In the hands of an experienced player, Bleed Me an Ocean goes down like dominoes. Why did I capitalize dominoes? <laughs> Nostalgia's first BFG is available almost right away if you check this flickering indented light, and if you don't let the cacos block you into the computer room, you'll cruise through the rest of the map no sweat. Nostalgia's not meant to be a hard set, but Bleed Me an Ocean is disappointingly spineless. Grade B-, difficulty D-. Map 10, Creeping Death. Undoubtedly the toughest map in the Megawad so far, Creeping Death bleeds Plutonia, and not just because it uses a Plut Midi and has blood seeping out of it. Heavy hitters have overrun this grassy bunker, with the Revenants and Macubi being particularly troublesome, and my Olden singes you with two atypically nasty archfile traps before the fat lady sings. The final fight will be a wake-up call for vets who dozed off. It's a round robin of revenants, hell knights, barons, and archies. Even with a free BFG, it's quite overwhelming. Creeping Death was also the first map where I couldn't track down all the secrets without assistance from Dave Taylor. Well, and American McGee. Grade B, difficulty C+. Map 11, Rapture. A rousing wrap-up to the first episode, Rapture turns up the temperature and ladles on the sauce. Even with an early plasma rifle, the opening shootout always takes a bigger bite out of me than I expected to. Beware especially those sneaky skeletons, and think carefully before jumping into the spider pit. As usual, finding secrets will soften the blow. Side note, my olden likes solitary soul sphere secrets enough for me to think of them as one of his mapping signatures at this point. With the main area exercised, you can grab the rocket launcher and break into the heavily guarded BFG chamber. If you're strapped for ammo here, you might have to do a dance with the Martian and his merry band. I like to keep some rockets in my pockets just in case. Exploit the Cyber Demon's inability to play nicely with others, and you're bound for the big city, where nostalgia really hits its stride. Grade A-, difficulty B-. Map 12, The Lion's Den. Anybody brave enough to give the fire engine red brick texture a starring role in their map has my respect. Led by a hard-rocking midi, The Lion's Den kicks off a doom-cute winning streak for nostalgia. I really enjoy walking these burn barrel lined streets, and the collapsed tunnel, construction barrier, and simple domicile are all worth a smile. The combat sticks closely to the My Olden playbook, loose firefights punctuated by lowering wall traps and a few tight squeezes. I like the stylistic shift that Lion's Den introduces a bit more than the map itself, but it's still a fine piece of work. Grade B, difficulty C. Map 13, Sludge Factory. Sludge Factory might be fun for you, but it's just another 9 to 5 for the demons. The cacodemons are hard at work stewing their nukage vats, while imps and red Revenants loiter under the watchful eye of Foreman Baron, and you're probably doing these office zombies a favor putting them down. Talk about a dead-end job. The Hell Knight in the corner office seems like a nod to Moldy. In fact, so does most of the upper floor. I may be easy to please when it comes to Doom Cute, but these cubicle accessories are some of the cleanest I've seen in a while, and the running water sink trick is very clever. Getting the plasma rifle secret was the hardest part of this map for me, but that's probably more a reflection of my platforming skills than anything. The jovial music, laid-back action, and light-hearted set dressing make Sludge Factory a keeper. Grade A-, difficulty D+. Map 14, Beneath. The continuity of Nostalgia's City episode is such an ass it glues my olden's world together and creates opportunities for superb transition maps like Beneath. This demon commuter culling joins Kama Sutra map 13, Hellbound map 5, Augur Zenith map 6, and Heartland map 1 in keeping the noble tradition of Doom subways alive. I absolutely love that you can explore the other side of the tracks, pop outside, and crash a game of pickup basketball between two revenants and Macubi. If you're sharp, you can find both cell weapons and secrets out here. I feel a great deal of vicarious excitement seeing my olden's detailing chops rise 
rise to meet his ambition. Beneath's combat is a tad tepid, but it was always going to play second fiddle to the setting. Grade A-, minus, difficulty C-. Minus. Map 15, The Lotus Eaters. The overcast sky can't bring down the mood in this sprightly suburban shootout. The Lotus Eaters is a delicious slice of doom life, presumably named after its demon inhabitants, hypnotized by the middle-class American dream. In the same vein as Miss Sporty from Kama Sutra or My Fave from JPCP, the Lotus Eaters is content to doodle with line defs, showering the player with gizmos and visual gags, my favorite of which is this Sears painting that depicts E3M4, House of Pain. Get it? Some of the map's best stuff can only be accessed if you find the switch by Imp Jr.'s computer, which opens a teleporter to the fanciest house in the neighborhood. Fun fact, according to Myolden, it's actually a recreation of the home he lived in when he discovered Doom. This Archwile couple sure is well off if they can afford an in-ground pool and a pool table, which is stowed in the basement, next to the laundry machines. It's always a hoot to watch demons interact with quotidian objects, and Myolden picked the perfect map slot to go on a Doom cute binge. I have to lodge a complaint against the choice of MIDI, unfortunately. It's a better fit for mowing down demons than mowing the lawn. That minor quibble aside, to Lotus Eaters is one of nostalgia's highlights. Grade A, difficulty C. Map 31, Power Slave. TNT apologists represent. I guess I don't listen to that much metal, because Power Slave is the first nostalgia map title that means anything to me. Befitting its secret slot, Power Slave is on the tougher side, kicking off with a ruckus in the ruins that matches the best my olden's thrown at us so far. Them Bones guard the BFG, which you'll need to dispatch the lone cyber demon and throngs of hellish lieutenants in the Yellow Key Crypt. Maybe I've just gotten too comfortable, but Cyberman Dias always swipes a pelt or two off me here. If you found the blue key, have a peek at the left side of the pyramid as you come out of the crypt to find the secret exit. It gets off to a strong start, but I think Power Slave wants to be a bit longer and less shreddable by the BFG. Grade B, difficulty B-. minus. Map 32, Retro Vertigo. Hmm. I wonder who the inmates of this corner of hell will be. Retro Vertigo opens with the Cyberdemon roaring over a cacophony of Nazi gunfire. You're very exposed in this courtyard, so turn those Schustoffels into Meinlebens as quickly as you can. There's a caco closet behind the Cyber if you want to watch a infight, or you can save them to reenact Fortress of Mystery like I did here. Let's make it even more interesting. Cushioning this archfile hoedown with two megaspheres was a wise decision. The power-up safety net lets you appreciate the craziness of this fight without worrying so much, and propels you into the ending fully stacked. Retro Vertigo is probably the most entertaining Wolfenstein-themed map I know of. Grade A-, difficulty C+. Map 16, Fear of the Dark. A perfect pearl of a map, Fear of the Dark is nostalgia's doom-cute zenith, and my favorite map in the set to simply visit. The twinkly yet ominously expectant midi nestles deeply into my olden's alternately adorable adorable and creepy decor. The mid-texture greenery and huggable sector trees give me a warm and fuzzy feeling inside, but the panoply of tools in the barren shed is jaw-dropping, and the pushable piano key that lowers a bookshelf to reveal the BFG is one of the five coolest secrets I've seen in Doom. To be honest, the fights in this map are pretty obligatory. Even the suspenseful catacomb showdown isn't actually all that suspenseful with energy weapons at your disposal, but my olden makes no pretense of favoring action here. Fear of the Dark is a beautiful, clever, and absorbing graveyard stroll that you won't soon forget. Grade A, difficulty D+. Map 17, Ars Moriendi. Latin for the art of dying announces the return of my olden's more practical map craft. This halfway hellified port city map plays conservatively until you pass through the blue door and meet a roaming cyber demon and seafaring spider mastermind. A reference to MS Futura from Scythe, perhaps? Frugal players can set up a gotcha grudge match that the spider mama actually has a pretty good chance of winning. The barrier keeping you off the ship blocks cyber rockets, but not Spidey's super machine gun. The red key allows you to board the vessel and snipe the Queen of the Sea, consequence free. My Olden's excellent taste in MIDI helps this otherwise middling map stand out. All hail Tristan Clark. Grade B+, difficulty C+. Footnote, I don't think I've ever seen a mapper use lowering wall traps as often as my Olden. Let me go back and make a supercut to illustrate.
not sure if this is gonna be a funny gag or an intervention for you, my olden. Map 18, The Fault of the Flesh. First off, The Fault of the Flesh gets big props for continuity. It begins on the Mastermind's boat from last map. The Fault of the Flesh's blood, brick, and metal approach is less visually inspired than my olden's last few efforts, but I'll happily write him a one-man megawatt pass for that. The two archviles that appear here are pretty fearsome, especially the one guarding the blue key with a gang of imp proxies. I'm almost glad I forgot how to get the BFG, because it made this oversized, bloody coliseum a bit less disappointing. It speaks highly of nostalgia that this is one of its most forgettable maps. Grade B-, difficulty C+. Map 19, Times of Grace. An informal reprise of nostalgia's city theme that shares a lot of Map 17's DNA, Times of Grace is a blighted downtown shootout that makes excellent reuse of its space. Most of the action orbits the Red Key, which is floating atop the fountain spray in the middle of the park. The opening fight gets pretty hectic, especially if you fail to contain the plasma rifle protectorate, and the pink and brown imps will eat all your good ammo if you let them. A cyber demon guards the exit door, and he's a pain in the ass to SSG with the hedge backboards behind you and lava beneath your feet. I like the going down-esque backdrop in this map, but the rest of it feels a tiny bit redundant after Ars Moriendi. Grade B, difficulty C+. Map 20, Hell Awaits. There's a lot to like about Nostalgia's last terrestrial map. My olden stretches his fingers with one last dash of Doom Cute, hits you with some wicked surprise jabs, and limits your ammo to make things more interesting. The arch file that appears when you open the yellow door will scare the pants off first-timers in Forgetful Mountains, and my olden chases one of his signature wall-lowering traps in the Red Key Room with a rapid revenant formation in the testing chamber. Thank god the arch file leads the charge out of the Hell Gate, because your backpack is going to be light by map's end. It kicks off a bit questionably, but Hell Awaits turns out to be a stellar transition to Nostalgia's Inferno, and I appreciate the low-key irony that UAC Teleportation Research Labs is as mundane a place to work as Dunder Mifflin Paper Company. Grade B+, difficulty C+. Map 21, South of Heaven. Classic Doom Hell doesn't inspire much nostalgia in me, actually, but South of Heaven doesn't miss a step action-wise. If you're getting scythe vibes from all the red rock, don't worry. My olden won't be performing an Eric Alm-style suplex on us. You'll want to snap up the secret plasma rifle and the blood fall to your left, because the quadruplet of barons guarding the blue key will guzzle down whatever ammo you didn't spend on the revenants and cacos. Resist the temptation to burn rockets in the two-pronged red key cave fight, because you'll want to have a reply for Archie Vile when he comes to collect your soul. South of Heaven is a bit of a muted hell episode opener and undersells what's coming. Grade B-, difficulty C+. Map 22, Absolute Hatred. Oh, I see what you did there. Absolute Hatred turns the tables on folks expecting thy flesh rehashed. The cacos start behind you this time and herd you into the lava, but my olden extinguishes his own hot start with several rad suits, plenty of recovery items, including a secret megasphere, and a very missable super shotgun. After the opening room, Absolute Hatred feels a bit mailed in, with one L-shaped lowering wall trap and a BFG-able finale rounding things out. Without the Romero reference, this map would be pretty weak. Grade B-, difficulty C. Map 23, Blood Red. This rugged demon readout goes deeper than you think. Mind the cacos in the hitscan heavy start, and don't forget to hop to the super shoddy before plumbing the depths. There's also a secret BFG for rock climbing enthusiasts. Unlike most my olden secrets, it's a major difference maker difficulty-wise. The dark cellar fight and bloody basin shebang don't beg for bfg edge, but when you return to the surface, a half dozen cacodemons converge while the Earl of Cyberfordshire paces the ramparts. Every time I play this map, the plasma-hungry cyber makes my ammo situation dicey, but having the BFG ensures that you won't need more than 80 cells to dethrone him. If you're a Doom professional, that is. Blood Red's generic setting hinders it somewhat, but I like the eccentric, bassy midi and the combat in general. Grade B, difficulty B-. Map 24, Flesh and the Power It Holds is aptly named. This map is an upset stomach turned inside out, easily the tensest and most volatile nostalgia level yet. Right out of the gate, you're assailed with fodder foot soldiers, skulking revenants, lumbering macubi and sneaky chain gunners in tighter quarters than you've grown accustomed to. The yellow key archvile trap is a fool me twice, shame on me situation, but the next two fights are much harder to control. Don't bother sparing the cyber once you've butchered everything in the blue key skin pit. You unfortunately unfortunately can't take him with you. The double archfile bone squad that bleeds out of this map's musculature will strike fear in the hearts of newbies and possibly catch veterans napping. Flesh and the power it holds helps the episode find its feet, adding some much-needed mania to the proceedings. Grade B+, difficulty B+. Map 25, D-Devil. D-Devil is something of a concept map. At first, it appears to be, like time, nothing but 
a flat circle that soon reveals its diabolical purpose. Break into the Blue Key Sanctum and you'll find a slew of ammo, a mega sphere, and four archviles ready to pounce. Pairing Tristan Clark's mischievous midi with the antics of these nefarious demon medics was a strong decision on my olden's part. If you think this fiery game of musical chairs is bad, just wait. After you liberate the BFG and a red skull key from this flock of demons, get ready for three more vials right in your face, another one by the exit, and a cyber doorman standing by to keep speedrunners honest. Things can go very awry in this map, so be quick and don't let the vials make a grilled doom guy sandwich of you. Grade B+, plus, difficulty B. Map 26, Sepulchral Slaughter. Hands down the most violent map in the Megawad, Sepulchral Slaughter is a churning, blood-soaked nightmare maker packed to the gills with monsters. For the sunlust nuts out there, it's like a play school version of Mew Cephe. Wide open, fleshy, and full of traps. A glut of demons guard each of your major weapons. The imp and archvile super shotgun snare is the evilest, because the SSG is probably the first weapon you'll see, and your instincts may kick in before prudence does. The plasma rifle and rocket launcher fights lock you in until you're done with them, and the latter punishes hammerheads like me who leave demons alive on the gore shore with a twisty, narrow bridge to safety. Any key will unlock a BFG, so the best strategy would probably be to go for the plasma first to fill up on cells, then ride Big Green all the way to the end. Sepulchral Slaughter's only shortcoming is its placement. This map practically begs for the 29 slot. Grade A-, difficulty B+. Map 27, Wargool. I know filler when I see it. Wargool's gameplay lacks a strong hook, and its layout repeats many of Nostalgia's early motifs, specifically the courtyard opening, the atrium with a sunken center, and the twisty hallway that ends in a key and ambush. If you told me that my old and retextured a slime base originally meant for episode 1 and slapped down a few extra arch files to make it harder, I'd believe you. Save for the Cacodemon group hug at the end, nothing about this map stands out to me. Grade C, difficulty C+. Map 28, Seasons in the Abyss. This Stygian scene stealer brings my old a game. Judging by the ornate landscape, ripped up floorboards, and spare but effective encounters, I'd hazard a guess that this is one of the last maps my olden developed for this wad. The pitch black sky brings out the dangerous undercurrent in this Donkey Kong midi, which adds a hint of arcade magic to the action. Nostalgia indeed. Ammunition is at a premium here. You'll need to hang on to some cells to get past this gatekeeping cyber and thread your rockets through Archie's meat shields in the yellow key chamber. Seasons in the Abyss is an atmospheric and propulsive baton pass to Nostalgia's penultimate map. Grade A-, difficulty B-. Map 29, Chambers of Dis. Blood and green marble go together like peanut butter and jelly in classic Doom. Chambers of Dis channels E3M8 as much as a map without shuriken-shaped arenas and spider masterminds can. Helped along by another great Tristan Clark midi, this map builds holds more trepidation than it needs to, actually. Take it from someone who's been down a few of Doom City's darker streets. Chambers of Dis is baby's first slaughter, and that's for the best. One of my favorite things about Nostalgia is its ability to remind seasoned players of where they came from. The two Cyber and Hell Knight jamborees would have had me shaking in my boots pre-Dean of Doom, but the latter teaches valuable lessons in target prioritization, infighting, and goat herding. Take out the floaters, find cover, and let the Cybers do the work for you. Chambers of Dis is affably evil, a phrase which won't make sense to you unless you played enough Doom to feel cozy in low-powered hellish environments. Grade B, difficulty C+. Map 30, Nostalgia. Maximum respect to my olden for not only sticking to tradition with a good old-fashioned icon of Sin ending, but also sticking the landing on his megawad. Nostalgia's closer is almost completely painless. It's a simple matter of BFGing a spider demon and two cybers while ignoring everything else. With a red skull in your fist, you can take the stairs up to the shooting range and fling rockets right into the icon's forehead. No timed jumps necessary. Thanks, my olden. Grade B. B, difficulty D. So, Nostalgia was like a cup of hot chocolate in the blizzard of challenging maps I played at the end of 2022. Its homey visuals are unexpectedly comforting, and though it keeps a modest tempo, Nostalgia is never boring. According to my olden, the goal was to bridge the gap between Doom 2 and Plutonia in terms of challenge, but Nostalgia's gameplay most reminds me of early Scythe's best stuff. These maps are short, fun to look at, and easy to binge. Like Doom comfort food to somebody who plays a lot of it, it's stylish, enjoyable, and fluent in multiple themes. I've long been dissatisfied with my standard reply to the perennial question, I just finished the IWADs, what do I play next? Thanks to my olden, I have a new answer. My final grade for Nostalgia is an A-. Difficulty-wise, this will be a cakewalk for daily Doom players, but the Hell episode puts up more of a fight than Doom 2's, so a C- feels like a good fit. It's accessible, but not child's play. Now for my Dean's list. Valedictorian, Map 16, Fear of the Dark. Salutatorian, Map 15, The Lotus Eaters. 
Class President, Map 26, Sepulchral Slaughter, and the dunce cap goes to Map 27, Wargool. Nostalgia also earned itself an honor roll, with the following maps making the cut. Map 11, Rapture, Map 13, Sludge Factory, Map 14, Beneath, Map 32, Retro Vertigo, Map 26, Sepulchral Slaughter, and Map 28, Seasons in the Abyss. Thank you very much for watching, please feel free to share your thoughts on the wad down below. I'd love to hear what you think, and I'll heart your comments to let you know I've read them. Now, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge my generous patrons. Aaron Allen, Agile Jackson, Agoo XYZ, Alephany, Alex Topfer, Artisan Talzar, Bo Higginbotham, Beatbeard, Ben Barrett, Big Psy and his trusty Glock, Big Pash Plays, Birdburn, Blexor, Builder Sith, Bitefire, Kappa Bitch, Captain Wave, Cheese Wheel, Chris Duthat, Chris O'Neill, Christophine Place, Cutman Mike, Demo, Dan, Delirium, Doot Yourself, Dorothy Miller, Egg Boy, Emil Jan, Emma Essex, Endless Moose, Felix Wilson, Francis T218, Glenn Marmon, Goody, Griffin Upchurch, Hyak Show, In Captivity, Jeff Hibbert, Jeff Sherilla, Jose Ballestero, Josh Ballard, Jude, Just Some Schmuck, Just Great 98, Killplane, Quan, Large Cat, Leon Staten, Lexi, Logan Lazalda, Lucrenth, Lumnal, Mark Rowland, Master Drew 117, Matthew Gower, McJimbles, Michael Akins, Miracle Water, Mixer, MK2021, Moko Mothman MM47, Mosicon, Mr. Bob Cyndaquil, Myolden. Myolden, thank you so much for making Nostalgia. I had a lot of fun with it, and I think a lot of others will too. Nafferty, Neurometry, Nick XCOM, Knights 108, Number 26, Not Obelisk, NX Avery, Omnibot, Painful Hill 72, Pengerzan, Pezaveng Zhaj, Phantom Puff, Philip Coffee, Pyro She, Quibs, Red Doomed Earth, Reese Anderson, Richard Fry, Roadworks, Robbie Lyons, Sega Monkey, Sean Grant, Sid Menon, Sir Lethbridge Doomer, Small Venom, Snacker Fork, Some Spoony Bard, Spinner 8, Stonemason, Stupid Nick, Sunriser, Super Pecan Man, Sylvester Priss, Tara Kushino, That Guy Known as Will, The Fiery Charmeleon, The Freeman 500, The Sapphire Tri, TJG1289, Trilby Trillion, Turbine 2K5, Ultra Cow, Why Bemo Not a Crab, William Huber, and Wonkashack. Thank you. I appreciate you all very much. This is Mount Payne 27, and I'll see you in the next episode of Dean of Doom.